Ta-da! I hope you're all having a wonderful day. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you how I hide my hormonal acne. I don't know about you guys, but for me, like I find talking about my period and like hormonal stuff very taboo. I'm getting more in there, like just kind of like, you know, throwing it out there, but at least the way I grew up, it's not something we talk about or go on and on about. But I wanted to change that for today's video because I have had it with my hormonal acne. There's nothing I can do to get rid of them. And it's so frustrating, no matter how much water I drink or if I'm like exercising or eating like crazy healthy food or just like not touching my face or not putting on makeup, like it doesn't matter what I do it won't go away and it's always in the same spot and it's always like the week before like I just I hate everything and everyone <laughs> so I've played around with a lot of products I have really been wanting to get this down over the last few months and I think I finally have the thing I'm just gonna knock. oh okay good the dog didn't go insane so I'm gonna share with you guys how I do that and I'm very very excited about that. I also did do a blog post about this as well so if you'd rather read about it then like listen to it go check it out the link will be in the description. Also if you want to check out other blog posts that I've written or just want to subscribe that would be great. So yeah let's just get up and personal and uh, see how I clear up my skin. <laughs> okay let's, let's fix this. <laughs> but I have moisturized my face, I put my lip balm on, lip balm on and I also sprayed my face with the rose spray. I find that spraying this really kind of calms down my skin. It doesn't look calm at all, but it, it has calmed it down quite a bit as well, like really brought out where my acne spots are, which is good because then I can go in with other products and like focus and bring down that retina. Yeah, so I'm gonna start off by priming my face. I think this is so important and it's really important to know what primers work for your skin. You have to know that your skin is never the same as somebody else's. So some products might not work for you and some products will. So I have found my priming base um, that has worked for me and it's gonna change in the next few months because warmer weather is coming. But so far, the past month-ish, these two products have been working. I start off with the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer and then follow up with the Pore Professional one. So I'm just gonna pop two squirts of the primerizer on. This just is really hydrating and I like focus it where my big spots are so that it stays hydrated and like it won't like flake off during the day and in these areas too. It's nice to keep your skin hydrated and feeling soft. Please don't mind my red skin. It's super sensitive. Now after the primerizer has been settled, my skin is soft, looking a little dewy, which is nice. I'm going to go in with the more professional ones, but I'm putting this one on my ring fingers. It's like my third one's in. I can't remember where I read that or someone did that, but I'm just putting it in my t-zone area it's nice because it has enough pressure on your skin but they're also i think like where i heard it is it's not your dominant finger so most of like the product isn't is getting into the skin rather than your finger that's the way i did it and i actually have noticed a difference in applying it that way so it's also in your technique not necessarily the product so i just like to put it in these areas because my pores are rather big in these areas so gonna do that and it's really soft. So what I'm doing now is I'm going in with a light concealer. This is the Glossier Stretch Concealer. But what I like to do with this one, because it is so light, you can just apply it with your finger and kind of get rid of your dark circles and a bit of the redness. I like just putting it directly on and just lightly dabbing it because that, that's where it helps with the redness when you go to apply uh, your foundation afterwards. And it's nice to blend around it too so you don't just have like a circle of this. So yeah, it's not a super intense concealer. It's not like concealing everything up, but it is kind of calming it down and getting things ready for the foundation. Lately, I haven't been wearing a ton of foundation. I've been going in with either a BB cream or a tinted moisturizer. So the tinted one that I use is the Clinique Redness Solution, um, or are you, oh sorry, a CC cream, which is the IT Cosmetics. So I've been switching between these two a lot lately if I'm wearing makeup. Just because I feel it's a lot lighter on my skin, I'm not, it's not super heavy. For days that I have a lot to do, or I'm like, like today I'm like filming a bunch of things and I'm getting out of the house kind of thing, that's where I go in with like the really good foundation. This one is the Revlon one. I'm in the shade F4. This is amazing. It's $12. I saw this Alta when I was in uh, Florida. But I just 
put that on. Thing. And I'm not a huge fan of the stick. Like, I don't really like it because you're, like, putting it on your skin and then putting it back in foundation. And I just think, like, I don't know, germ-wise. Uh, I'm just going to go, oh, sorry, with my Real Techniques brush and buff it out. I'm kind of, like, dabbing, just, like, getting it settled into the skin while kind of spreading it out. But this foundation is really good. It do doesn't get a ton in the brush. Like, you are using a lot of it. I just realized you can't see my forehead. I should probably bend down. Sorry. So the foundation did a pretty good job. It kind of covered up here and it covered most of my redness, which is really nice. However, you can still see some of the spots sticking up and that's a little annoying. So now I'm going in with concealer and this is where the magic happens. I'm going in with my Maybelline concealer. I also like to switch between the Urban Decay Naked one, but I like to stick that just underneath my eyes because it's brighter. It's a lighter thing. So I'm going to do that first and kind of just keep like let the foundation settle in for a minute before I put on a lot of concealer in those areas. So I'm just going to highlight points in my face and going in with the same brush, the Real Techniques Face One, and just kind of dabbing it in the, and blending in that concealer. Okay, so now that is concealed, going in with my concealer. I'm just going to put it directly on the zit. So they are on my spots now oh I can feel this one burning great now I'm gonna go in with my brush so the concealer brush I actually I don't even think this is a concealer brush I think it is is an eyeshadow brush I ordered a bunch of eyeshadow brushes on Amazon however I use the flat tip one and I just start in the middle actually maybe I'll zoom I think I'm gonna zoom you guys in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing hi <laughs> so I'm just going to tap in the middle and just spread it out but very gently like you're just gonna be moving around a lot of product for a while and then push harder around the zit <laughs> how do I explain that? so that you're blending it in more around the edges but when you're near the zit and on it just be very gentle you see I pushed a little too hard around this side like you can kind of still see it I mean from afar like in my big mirror I can't see it but when I'm in this distance I can see it so I'm just gonna take the leftover concealer that was on this brush from when I was dab. Oh, you couldn't even see this one from up here which is fine this one was like um, really dry um, and really popped out so I'm just gonna push a little bit harder um, but I'm just gonna lightly spread it out there For the most part we're all concealed this is great I love it I look like I have clean skin now now the most important part which you have to do quite quickly is setting powder so you need to set it I just take this same brush lightly grab some tap it off and just lightly push on it so there now my face I think I'm at a good oh, See, I pushed, I pushed too hard, and now I can, I can see it. Maybe it's because I know it's there, and I'm staring at it. But like from first glance, you don't see it, and even from my faraway mirror, I'm not really noticing it. Is if you really look for it, I think that's what you can get. So, which is for the most thing, most acne bits. Like I remember I went away a few weeks ago, and I had a big hormonal acne again. That's great. And that's all I could see all weekend, and I was so self-conscious by it, and then when I brought it up, they're just like, we didn't see it. Like, what are you talking about? Oh, there it is. Oh, wow, yeah, that's a big zit. So, you know, some people don't see it, so it's all whatever. I'm gonna go finish the rest of my face with my makeup. I like to let the products kind of settle in a little bit and kind of, you know, do its own thing, so I don't go full out with other powders or creams on my face. Like, I'll do my brows and I'm going to do my eyes next. Um, and then while that's still settling, as, uh, sometimes it can settle and like things can shift. So that's when you go in with either like a little bit more concealer or um, with powder. If you are going in with a second layer of concealer, I suggest like if you have a concealer like this, take the wand, don't apply it on here. Just take the brush, a little bit of it, and then go and apply it. You don't want to put on too much product because then it gets cakey and it doesn't look good. Um, but yeah, so in terms of setting the rest of my face, that's when I go in with my beauty blender, dab it into the powder and then put it in those areas. But I don't really want to bake today, so I'm just going to use a brush. So yeah, so I'm going to finish the rest of my makeup and then come back up at you guys later. 
Ta-da! I now look like an acceptable human. So that is how I cover up my acne. I put on a bunch of face products. I mean, I'll zoom you in. So that's what it looks like now. I really need to whiten my teeth and stop drinking coffee. But like, it's not as noticeable. It's not crazy, but it also doesn't look super cakey, which I like. So yeah, maybe it's the lighting of my forehead situation. Not too bad. All right, now we're, <laughs> we're back into my full face. So the brush has been the biggest game changer. N need to put that tip out there because I have noticed of me like butchering it. It's just be very gentle, be very light and be patient with it. Uh, so yeah, so definitely the brushes. I will leave the link down below of the Amazon brushes that I got because even with eyeshadow, like they're very nice. Like that one's like the pointed one. Like they're just very nice. And they come with like a wide variety of them too. Like there's like an angled one to get into your highlight. There's an eyeliner one. There's just a ton. So I highly recommend them. They're very good brushes. I've washed them a bunch and I haven't found any problems with them and they blend really nicely so yeah and I don't know a huge amount of stuff about makeup so that seems to work for me so if you enjoyed today's video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos of myself also I want to film an updated q and A. I filmed one back in October but I kind of want to get back into that as well so comment down below any questions you have for me that you want me to answer um, I'm also going to post that on my Instagram story when will this go up uh, so it will be next week go follow me on Instagram if if you want to post on there as well. I'm trying to post every day on Instagram. So far I'm not doing too bad. I'm gonna stop rambling. Uh, I don't know what this is. It's like a fish. Okay, I'm just gonna get silly. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you all in my next video. Bye!